العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين والله benefit us with what you have taught us and teach us what will benefit us and provide us with knowledge that will benefit us O oh Allah we seek from you beneficial knowledge and wide sustenance and cure from all sorts of physical spiritual and mental diseases O oh Allah increase us in knowledge my dear brothers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In our last session, the tafsir of uh, Surat al Baqarah was done up to verse uh, 48. Today, inshallah, we'll try to cover the tafsir of verses 49 to 53, hopefully, inshallah. So, the verse 49 says, وَإِذْ نَجَّيْنَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَا يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ يُذَبِّحُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ وَفِي ذَلِكُمْ بَلَاءٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ عَظِيمٌ And recall, when we rescued you from Pharaoh's people, who subjected you to horrible punishment, slaughtering your sons and sparing only your daughters. It was a great trial from your Lord. From here on, through the several passages that follow, reference is made to the test. Now, Ali Fir'aun, we, we see this term many times in the Quran. What does Ali Fir'aun means? It refers to the Pharaoh's people, which includes the members of his family, as well as the elite upper classes or the aristocracy of Egypt. Earlier, verse 47 had spoken of the special favors shown to the Bani Israel, to the children of Israel, by Allah, when he had said in verse 47, O children of Israel, remember or recall all the favors I granted you and how I honored you above the others. Now, with this particular verse, with verse number 49, it, there begins the account of what these favors were, which um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did on Bani Israel, but they did not sort of live up to it or did not thank Allah enough. Now, someone had made a prediction to the Pharaoh. By the way, since the word Pharaoh is coming, let me clarify to you that Pharaoh is not the name of a person. Pharaoh was the name or the title, the name of the title of the king of Egypt at that time. So the Pharaoh, for example, when Musa salam, came to the palace as a baby, the Pharaoh was different. And when Musa salam, when he got the Wahi, the Torah, and he came to uh, uh, teach and preach and tell Pharaoh about the, the teachings and about uh, worshipping Allah and things like that. So that was a different Pharaoh. Uh, his successor, uh, the successor of the previous Pharaoh. So Pharaoh is uh, the title given to the king. So now we are talking about someone had made a prediction to the Pharaoh that a child was going to be born among the Bani Israel, who would destroy his kingship. So he began, he was a tyrant. Uh, he, he used to say, Ana Rabbakumul ala. I, I am your Lord, he said, the, the, the highest Lord. Now, he began slaughtering all the male infants as soon as they were born. 
naturally this meant that no one would rise up to take away or snatch away his kingship. So he devised this plan and he would spare the females as there was nothing to fear from them. And moreover, they could, the females, they on growing up, they could serve as uh, maid servants or, or like their concubines. And so even this leniency, which was done by the Pharaoh, which was to spare the lives of women, it was motivated by self-interest. So what does it refer to when Allah says a great trial, Bala'un Azim? The verse refers to a great trial. It is either the, the slaughtering of the sons of the boys which were born, who were born, it was a calamity. It, 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 it was a huge test. And it is also the quality of patience that is tested in a calamity. That also is a test. How much patient uh, is a person when there is a test which is beyond sort of his capacity? He doesn't have control over it. Or of, it could also be a test, the, the deliverance, uh, the, the, the freedom which from the people of the Pharaoh, Allah delivered the Bani Israel. He made them free, I mean, later on. That, all, that was a blessing. And it is the quality of thankfulness and gratefulness which is tested when one receives the blessing. So the test was whether the children of Israel, the Bani Israel, they would emerge from the, uh, from the you could say, the crucible of persecution as pure gold or as mere waste matter. You know, in the lab, when something is put to very high temperature in a crucible, uh, then it, it is basically to purify. So the, the, the waste matter, the sediment, it, it, it gets separated from the uh, pure uh, metal or whatever the, the, uh, it is in the crucible. So whether they would, uh, become grateful servants of Allah, that is after having been delivered, delivered from the uh, bondage of, of a Pharaoh, from the slavery of Pharaoh or not. So the next ayah says, uh, And when we parted the sea for you and rescued you, and drowned Pharaoh's people as you were looking on. They, they, were, they were looking all this physically. I mean, they were washing all this, the sea separate and they, and we'll come to it. So this verse and the next one gives us the details about how they were saved, how the Bani Israel was saved while they were fleeing uh, from, the, uh, from, from the Pharaoh. Verse 50, the one which I just recited, it refers to certain things which had happened in the days of Musa alayhi salam. He, in his capacity as a messenger of Allah, continued efforts for a long time to make the Pharaoh and his people see the truth. But when they persisted in their denial, Allah commanded him to take the Bani Israel along with him and leave Egypt secretly. So on their way they came across a sea while the Pharaoh was behind them with his army chasing them. He was in hot pursuit of them. He wanted to destroy and kill every one of them. So they crossed when, when, when the sea was parted uh, as a miracle. The Bani Israel, they crossed the, the seabed uh, smoothly. The, the sea parted and the seabed was visible. It, it was dry. It must have been. That's why they, they uh, crossed it. But when the Pharaoh and his army followed them into the sea, the water gathered back so that he and all his men were drowned. The entire army. So this verse speaks of the splitting of the sea and clearly proves 
that miracles do occur at the hands of prophets. We, we see these miracles, many of them, uh, while uh, uh, reading the Quran, in our study of the Quran. Now the next ayah, verse 51, it says, وَإِذْ وَعَدْنَا مُوسَىٰ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَةً ثُمَّ اتَّخَسْتُمُ الْعِجْلَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وَأَنْتُمْ ظَالِمُونَ and recall when we appointed for Musa 40 nights, then you chose to worship the calf in his absence and you were unjust. So this refers to other incidents in the same story when the Pharaoh had been drowned along with his army, the Bani Israel, according to one report, went back to Egypt or according to another report, they began to live somewhere else. But having at, at last found a peaceful existence, they now wished that they could receive a sharia, that is a, a religious code of laws from Allah, which they should follow. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he called, he summoned Musa alayhi salam to Mount Sinai for 40 days and nights so that the nation which had now achieved independence could be taught law and morality. That is what the Sharia is. Law, morality, guidance. So Musa alayhi salam completed 40 days of total fasting and devotion when he went up the uh, Mount uh, Sinai also called uh, the mountain of Tur. It's called in Arabic Tur, Mount Sinai. So while he was on Mount Sinai, something very terrible happened to the Bani Israel. Among them, there was, there was a man called Samiri. He fashioned, he made the figure of a calf out of gold. He collected the jewelry of the people, of so many people who were in the uh, Bani Israel, he melted it, he, and out of that molten uh, m m jewelry uh, of gold and silver, he made a calf and put into it some of the dust which he had picked up from under the hooves of the horse of Angel Jibreel at the time when the Pharaoh and his army had been drowned. This we learn from traditions. And it's even given in the Quran that he, he told Musa alayhi salam when Musa alayhi salam asked him, why did you, what did you do? And why did you make this calf which the people worshipped? So the ignorant people among the Bani Israel was so impressed by this golden calf that they started to worship it. And Musa alayhi salam was not there. He was still on Mount Sinai. So let, let me talk to you a little about how, why they worship this. According, actually what happened was the cult, the, the, the practice of cow worship was widespread among the people with whom Bani Israel were living uh, during their stay and bondage in Egypt. So it was particularly common in Egypt and Canaan. Canaan uh, it was a place uh, from where, where Yaqub was there before. Uh, the area of Sham, of, of Jordan and Lebanon and Palestine and Syria, all that area, it was Canaan, it was called. Uh, so after the time of Yusuf just try to figure it out. After the time of Yusuf salam, when the Bani Israel, they fell prey to corruption and immorality. You see that the children of Yaqub I had said before, they were called Bani Israel. So they were living in Egypt because Yusuf salam had called his parents and all his uh, 11 brothers to Egypt because he had become the minister the, or, or the ruler of Egypt. 
So they had migrated from Palestine, from Syria, from Canaan to uh, Egypt. Now, as time passed, the children of Israel, the Bani Israel, they fell prey to corruption and immorality and became the slaves. This is what happens to the nations when they do not follow the laws of Allah, other nations get over them. So they they, they became the slaves of the Copts. Copts were the people living in Egypt, other people, not from the Bani Israel. And they were, the Bani Israel were contaminated by many of the corrupt practices prevalent among those people, among the Copts, and especially among the, the ruling class. So cow worship was one of them. So the verse 51, which, which I had just recited, it calls them uh, Zalimun, uh, that is, they were unjust for having committed this sin, for having committed the sin of cow worship, that is, doing shirk, that is, associating other things, other persons, other objects with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or, or arrogating the powers or divinity to anything other than Allah. Now the word zulm is very interesting. The word zulm, it means uh, injustice, but literally the word zulm, which is used here in the Quran, it means putting things in improper place. For example, uh, it just comes to mind while I'm talking to you, that Allah has made pairs of everything which means that when people enter into wedlock, a man and woman are supposed to enter into wedlock. Now, if a man happens to marry a man, then he is doing zulm because he is, the things are not being placed in, in the order in which Allah has ordained them. Or if a woman says that my partner or my life partner or my husband or wife is the other woman, then that is zulm because things are not being placed where they were supposed to be according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and according to revelation as described in all the scriptures and of course Quran is the final scripture. So in that sense uh, the, the zulm, uh, the, the, the shirk which they did is being called zulm. Why? Because the the sacredness of the cow was being uh, equated with divinity and it had no place to be done that. So that thing was placed in the improper place. It, it should have been only the worship and obedience of Allah while they worshipped something else which did not deserve to be worshipped. That is why it is said, I remember an ayah in the Quran, Inna shirka la zulmun azim. Verily, shirk, that is associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the biggest injustice. So, so uh, the next ayah, ayah number 52 says, Thumma afawna ankum min baadi zalika la'allakum tashkurun. Then we pardoned you. Allah forgave them. Even after that, so that you might be grateful. The use of the word la'allakum means so that you might be. It implies here, what implies here is that when a man receives forgiveness, uh, receives a pardon, he is expected to be grateful. He is expected to show gratitude and be thankful for the one who pardoned him. So the next ayah, ayah number 53 says, وَإِذْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ وَالْفُرْقَانَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ And recall, when we gave Musa the book and the furqan, the criterion, so that you might be guided. Now Torah or Taurat, it is the book which was given to Musa alayhi salam. So the word al-furqan, criterion, here means the understanding of religion which differentiates truth from falsehood and right from wrong, making each stand out distinctly. In the language of the Quran, 
Al Furqan is a term signifying something which separates truth from falsehood or distinguishes the one from the other. In the present verse, it refers either to the instructions, the injunctions of the Sharia, which are to be found in the Torah, the Ten Commandments, the do's and don'ts. For the Sharia, it resolves all the differences that may arise with regard to the belief system, the doctrines, or the practice of, that is of good deeds. What is right in terms of the belief system and what is right in terms of doing deeds and what is wrong. And number two, uh, Al-Furqan also refers to miracles which decide between a true or a false claim in a clear manner. For example, I think we've not come across that. Later on, we'll come across it, inshallah, that Musa alayhi salam, there was a competition between Musa alayhi salam and the magicians of Pharaoh. Uh, so uh, when uh, the, 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 I remember, you'll recall, when the magicians, they threw their sticks, they became into serpents and people got really uh, afraid and even Musa alayhi salam was a little overawed and overwhelmed. What's this happening? Then Allah told him to uh, throw his stick and that stick, it turned into a serpent and it devoured, it, it finished off, it ate away all the false uh, uh, tricks and things which they had done with the other magicians. Now, this was a clear al-Furqan, that is, the truth was separated from falsehood and that made the magicians uh, fall down in prostration because they knew that what Musa had was truth, it was not magic. And what they had done was just uh, mesmerizing people or hypnotizing them or making them believe to see certain things which were not there. Uh, that was magic. So miracles also are called Al-Furqan, what distinguishes between uh, truth and falsehood. And uh, even the, the Torah itself, it has the twin qualities of being a book of Allah and being an instrument for separating truth from falsehood. So any separation of truth from falsehood, right from wrong, evil from righteous deed, it's called Furqan. The Quran is also uh, termed as Al-Furqan. That is, uh, which distinguishes, distinguishes between uh, right and wrong. Uh, so <clears throat> the next verse, number 54, it says, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ إِنَّكُمْ ظَلَمْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ بِاتِّخَاذِكُمُ الْعِجْلِ فَتُوبُوا إِلَى بَارِئِكُمْ فَاقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ عِنْدَ بَارِئِكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ And when Musa said to his people, O oh my people, you have wronged yourselves by worshipping the calf. So repent to your Lord, repent to your uh, creator, and then kill yourselves. That would be better for you in your creator's sight. Then he turned to you, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, turned to you, accepting your repentance. He is always forgiving the most merciful. Now this verse, it describes the special mode of offering their tawbah, repentance. They were asked to repent from the sin of shirk which they had done by worshipping the cow. Uh, this was prescribed for the Bani Israel in this situation. And what was the tawbah? It's very, I mean, we should pay attention to it. It was that those who had indulged in the worship of the golden calf should, who had not indulged, that is, they remained free from worshipping, they did not worship the calf, 
they were told to kill those people who had actually engaged in the worship of uh, the, the cow worship or worshiping the calf. Now, uh, you know, similarly, in the Islamic Sharia also, certain major sins, they necessarily entail capital punishment even when the sinner has offered this tawbah. For example, life in return for a life, in the case of uh, intentional murder, for example, or, or death by stoning, in the case of adultery, which has been established through proper evidence. So the Bani Israel, they had to act upon this divine commandment. So how, why is it said that Allah is for, oft forgiving and he, he forgave them? Because the people who were killed, uh, the, 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 who, had, uh, who had been uh, guilty of uh, cow worship and, and they were asked to repent by um, they got killed by those who had not worshipped. They became worthy of receiving mercy and favor of Allah in the other world, in the hereafter. Here, the capital punishment was given to them, but they will not be held accountable on the day of judgment. That was the mercy shown by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on them. So the next verse, ayah number 55 says, وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَىٰ لَنْ نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّىٰ نَرَى اللَّهَ جَهْرَةً فَأَخَذَتْكُمُ السَّائِقَةُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ And when you said, Musa, we will never believe you till we see Allah openly. So the thunderbolt took you as you watched. Now Prophet Musa alayhi salam brought the Torah from Mount Sinai and presented it to Bani Israel as the book of Allah. Some of them were so, what do you call, insolent, so audacious. They said that they could not believe it unless, until and unless Allah himself told them that it was from him. They wanted Allah to, to tell them that this book is from me. <coughs> so, with the permission of Allah, Musa alayhi salam replied that even this condition could be fulfilled if they went with him to Mount Sinai. So, Bani Israel, they chose the best 70 men, the elder 70 men for this purpose. So, arriving there, they heard the words of Allah. They heard the words of Allah with their own ears. Now in their perversity, they invented a new trick. It was not enough, they said, to hear the speech of Allah, for they were not sure whether it was Allah himself speaking to them. So the next thing they demand, they, they uh, made was that they would finally uh, be convinced if they could only see Allah with their own eyes. This is another demand they made to Musa alayhi salam that let Allah appear in front of our eyes and we should be able to see him physically with our eyes. Now since it is beyond the power of a living being to be able to see Allah in the physical world, they had to pay for their impudence and their disrespect. And they were killed by a thunderbolt. They were all killed by a, 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 a thunderbolt which struck them. All these 70 men who had gone up uh, the Mount Sinai with Musa alayhi salam. So the next verse, number 56, it reports their death. Thumma ba'asnaakum min ba'di mawdikum la'allakum tashkuroon. Then we resurrected you after your death so that you might give thanks. Now this, this verse, it refers to death which suggests that the thunderbolt had killed them. Now since the Bani Israel had always been mistrusting Musa alayhi salam even though he was a Nabi of Allah, 
he feared that is musa alaihi salam feared that they would suspect him of having taken all these 70 men to a solitary place and got them slaughtered so he prayed to allah to save him from such a vile accusation and allah accepted his prayer and gave the dead persons a new life so many times in the quran we, we see that allah raised the dead uh, and, and gave them life again we see it uh, we will come to it inshallah in other ayat of the quran uh, so that the people witnessed uh, dead people coming to life it will come inshallah later on uh, because it has come in the quran that uh, isa alaihi salam was given the power to raise the dead and give them life with the last permission of course so uh, with this uh, inshallah we conclude uh, the uh, tafsir uh, which we did today from um, ayah number 49 to ayah number 56 and inshallah we'll carry on with the tafsir of verse 57 uh, onwards in our next session bismillahi ta'ala so with this uh, let us pray that Allah may bless me and you through this wise and mighty Quran and benefit me and benefit you by the verses and wise reminder the Quran contains. I say this and I seek Allah's forgiveness for myself and for you and for all Muslims and for from all our sins. And we should seek Allah's forgiveness. Indeed, He alone is the oft-forgiving, most merciful. Jazakumullahu khairan.